Yeah, so wedding season is around the corner and I actually already had shot my first wedding of this year. And before the season finally kicks off, I wanted to take a moment to talk about a piece of gear that I believe is absolutely essential for wedding photography. If you don't already have one, I hope this video will convince you to consider adding it to your kit. I'm talking about the 35mm f1.4 Sigma Art lens. In my opinion, the most important lens for wedding photography. But before I dive into my review, let me give you a bit of background on my journey with wedding photography. Photography. Back in 2014, I was asked to shoot my first wedding. At the time, I wasn't even considering a career in photography. I was working part-time at a souvenir shop while studying. But I decided to give it a try. And finally, I also can say this phrase, the rest is history. I've now been shooting weddings for almost 10 years. Huh, this felt really good finally to be able to say this phrase. And also not good, because it means that I have gained lots of experience, which means lots of time has passed and I got older. <sighs> but let's move on. As a student, money was tight, so I always tried to make the most out of the gear I had. I started with Canon 600D and 50mm lens next to kit lens, then upgraded to a full frame Canon 6D and a Tamron 2470mm f2.8 lens for its versatility. Eventually, I switched to Sony with 2875mm lens, which is basically the same as 2470mm lens in terms of field of view. Then I got myself a second Sony body and started carrying it with me at weddings with 50mm f1.8 lens on it as a backup camera. However, I found myself using the 50mm lens more and more during wedding shoots, even though I had to put in more effort by moving around rather than using the zoom on my lens which I also had with me. The reason? The wider aperture allowed me to better separate the subject from the background, making my images stand out. It is funny as when I started using 50mm lens more at first I couldn't get why. I just always had the feeling that I subconsciously prefer how images from 50mm lens looks. Then one time an assistant working with me on a wedding happened to have a Sigma 35mm lens on his Sony camera. Out of curiosity I asked to try it out and after that I realized that this was what I had been missing in my wedding photography. I could even say a feeling of big revelation came down to me. The very next day I went and bought myself the Sigma 35mm f1.4 lens. It was a strange feeling to go and spend almost all money that I just earned yesterday. But after using it I can say that it has been a game changer for me and money was well spent. Now as I head into new season with this lens I can confidently say that every wedding photographer should have a 35mm lens in their kit. If you already own one, share your experience in the comments. Leave a like and let's get into the review. It's hard to decide where to start from as I really, really like this lens and images that it produces. First and foremost, let's talk about the focal length. Many people believe that the 50mm focal length is the closest to how our eyes see. However, the 35mm lens offers a wider angle of view, giving you the feeling of being in the scene. And this is the exact and instant feeling that I got when I tried 35mm lens for the first time. I could just feel the scene through the image. The 35mm focal length is perfect for capturing events like weddings, where you need to capture both the setting and the people in it. When we shoot a wedding, we as photographers have to capture different type of images, from close-up portraits, details, establishing shots, ceremony, wedding couple's photo shoot and the reception after. So during wedding day we end up combining portrait, product, event photography and more. Usually it is nice to have a few lenses on the go to use them for different parts of the wedding. But what is special about 35mm lens is that if needed you can shoot the entire wedding with just only one lens. It's wide enough to capture the surroundings and the people in it. 
making it perfect for establishing shots and capturing reactions. Compared to a 50mm lens, the 35mm lens is more versatile as it can capture both wide and close-up shots without making you feel like you're too close to the subject. In contrast, a 50mm lens can limit your ability to capture wide shots and you might not have enough space or time to keep distance. Furthermore, using a zoom lens can be limiting in low-light situations, but Sigma 35mm f1.4 art lens is bright and allows you to shoot without a speed light, giving you more flexibility. So, in my opinion, to be left out at the wedding with only 35mm lens isn't that bad, unlike with 85mm lens, for example. That would be a real struggle, I think. By the way, if you shoot weddings, share in the comments your situation that you could describe as a real struggle. I think we all have to deal with different sorts of things at the weddings, and sometimes those situations are hilarious. Well, at the time they are not, but after some time it is funny to remember that we survived something ridiculous. So share yours if you have one. The other thing that I like in my Sigma 35mm lens is the aperture of f1.4. As I just mentioned, it gives you flexibility to shoot without speed light in low light conditions, which means a more natural feel to the images. And the second benefit of wide aperture is subject separation from the background. In fact, this very aspect is what keeps me from switching to Fujifilm for weddings. I want to have Fujifilm color science in wedding images, but I also want shallow depth of Field. But unfortunately, with Fuji's lenses, it is harder to achieve. That's why I'm still sticking to my Sony, even though I like Sony's colors less. The design of this lens isn't my favorite. It is better than Tamron lens design, but for example, worse than Zeiss Batiste lens design that looks like modern piece of art. As it is my workhorse, the design of it is the least of my concerns. On the other hand, the materials the lens made of is quite good. Here you can find metal body, also here you get aperture ring and custom button that I personally don't use. But it is nice option to have, as well as the autofocus switch. So if you want to shoot something with manual focus, you can easily do it without going to camera menu to change focus settings. The only downside for me is the size. After Canon 6D and 24-70mm lens, it was nice to switch to mirrorless Sony and 28-75mm lens, as the new kit was more compact and lighter than previous one. But this Sigma 35mm lens is as big as it was on DSLR cameras, and I already forgot how big camera kits used to be. So yeah, I would prefer more compact size, but I can live with that in exchange for the great images it produces. So for now, this Sigma 35mm f1.4 art lens has taken the main spot in my wedding photography kit, and I pair it with my Sony 85mm f1.8 lens, but honestly, I make about 85% of shots with 35mm lens and only some close-up shots on 85mm lens. That's why I said that you can easily shoot the entire wedding with just 35mm lens. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it was useful for you. Share your thoughts in the comments, ask questions if you have one, also watch this video next that might be helpful for you too. But for now, have a nice day and keep shooting!